Everybody, welcome to our masterclass today. This is a masterclass on iGUIDE pricing strategy. Um, I am Kelly. I am the manager of client success over here at iGUIDE. I oversee success and support teams. This is Michael Ravenna. Um, if you aren't familiar with him, shame on you. But also, this is our uh, VP of sales and business development. So I am co-hosting with Michael. I'm going to go through a couple of housekeeping items, and then we're going to get into it. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties uh, there was a whole presentation uh, whiteboarding session that we had um, set up for you guys, but it's not working because we love technology until we don't, right? Um, so first things first, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure you're on our forum so you can pay attention to conversations there, great conversations there, and on our Facebook group. Um, and if you haven't downloaded the mobile app, you are missing out. Um, we launched that this year. We worked really, really hard on it. So many people on our team, you know, worked so, so hard on this whole initiative and getting an app out and it's out, it's available now. So go to your Play Store, your app store, wherever you download apps, I Guide Planix, download it today. We've had some really great feedback on it and please, pretty please with all of the cherries and sprinkles and all of the things on top review. Uh, we need you to review it to help the I Guide app become visible, more visible for others. Right now you have to type in iGUIDE clinics um, and the more people we have reviewing on the app stores and all of the online places, um, the better. So we would really, really appreciate it if you could um, review, put a review of the app in there. Please send us feedback if you have any feedback. Um, but download it today. It, it makes life easier in so many ways and we worked really hard on it and we hope you love it and we wanna know what you think and and see how it goes. Uh, so today we are here to talk about pricing strategy. Um, we are not here to tell you how to price your products or your services, and we are definitely not here to tell you how to run your business. So we're just, this is a guiding light. We want to be lighthouses in the dark, in the fog, um, give you some general directions in which to look, uh, some things you should think about as you're doing that, and point you in the right direction, hopefully, if you feel lost. And if you don't, then that's totally cool as well. So I'm going to stop talking because I feel like I've talked doubly, even though you couldn't hear me the first half. Um, and Michael is going to take it away. Great. Okay. Well, yes, I'm again, uh, just a quick apology for not being able to really, uh, I guess, do this by putting session because that was uh, a lot of it was uh, planned on that. Um, maybe you can take a look at that and see if that if you can allow that person to share there. Um, however, uh, what we're going through is really I'm just going to have a general conversation around pricing, things to consider when you are pricing in the market. And really, I think it comes down to, I guess, three big things in terms of what I look at or what we look at in terms of when you're considering pricing. Um, and so we'll, we'll touch on these three things uh, and kind of just go, we won't do a deep dive into it. It might beckon some uh, questions and some conversations as we have, but um, um, it would be great to, uh, you know, I, I guess, start that conversation and be able to have a chat about it as well. So mm -hmm. um, I got to I'm going to have to pull up my whiteboard here just uh, or start the conversation today. But, um, you know, the first one when we talk about these three elements to consider is understanding your offering, your value. What is it that you're offering to your customers and the value that you're bringing to it? So what is in your offer is kind of one of the first considerations that you're looking at. You know, what are you providing? And, you know, we're talking primarily about real estate uh, photography and media services. Um, and so when you have that offering, how does that, um, how does that compare to the competition? And a, a great place to start because a lot of this is very market dependent. We see different prices across you know, the US and in Canada, depending on if you're, you know, what city you're in, what market you're in, um, and, and the amount of competition that's in the market. So a great place to start is really understanding that kind of competition uh, and, and really laying out what, what you would call as a competitive canvas. So, you know, understanding your offering in terms of what is in the product offering, uh, that Maybe if it's a photo package, you're also offering other things like floor plans, eye guide services as well, uh, video drone services, um, really understanding what that base package is and how does that compare? And you have to make sure that it's an apples to apples comparison. 
you know, the, the same number of photos in, in the package that you're doing, but it also ties into the quality of work and the type of work that is also being provided by your competition and out there. So doing that deep dive and analysis into what uh, um, your market uh, is willing to pay for that is a really key consideration. The other big thing to look at is what your customers are willing to pay and what they are willing to pay for that. Uh, for those types of services. And so that really allows you to then plot out and how you typically plot this out is you would show a graph in terms of comp competitor one, two, and three, and where your pricing aligns with that. And you can look at certain criteria, things like price, uh, quality of work, uh, speed of delivery, um, in terms of, of your service area as well. And these are a lot of considerations that you want to look at in terms of the number of photos or the value of your package compared to the competition out there. And that really ties into you know, the biggest amount of homework that you can do really in terms of understanding either if it's you're new to the business and delivering on a service or if you're looking to uh, add an additional service to what you're providing today. How do you price that and make sure that it fits into that that market and the market will tolerate it, I guess, is, is another way to look at it. Another thing that, uh, you know, people consider um, in terms of, you know, understanding your value prop and your, your uh, what you're delivering is, you know, we talked about the quality of the work. Quality is kind of a big player in this space because it does vary. Um, and, you know, I've heard a lot of people talk about uh, expertise and being able to charge for expertise uh, or experience rather, I, I guess as well as say, being able to charge for experience. Experience is one of those things that um, I think it could be quite difficult to charge for, but it, it is, um, and just the tapping, I think is uh, the microphones right there. So it might be mm. loud. Um, the uh, experience, I think, you know, instead of looking just at the experience that you bring to the table, what's the experience that you're producing for your customer? How are you bringing that value to your customer and what that experience looks like? So that's really kind of under the first, you know, consideration in terms of your pricing model is really understanding that market, what it holds, and how you compare it to your competition with the offering that you're bringing to the table. Uh, the biggest consideration it's, it's my second point, but is the first thing that I consider when I, we look at pricing for uh, any type of service, product, or offering is really pricing for profit. I think that's the uh, one of the biggest keys in terms of I've had a career of pricing products for consumer goods, uh, from uh, services, and, and professional B2B services as well. And then every time you know, unless your strategy is to scale up and take market share in a big way, like someone like an Uber, where you have deep pockets and you can go after that market, my recommendation and, and really what how I've always looked at pricing is pricing for profit. I think profit is what it's going to, it's a long-term play. It's a strategy that works uh, and helps you maintain your business and also invest, reinvest back into your business. And so this is kind of where the whiteboarding session was really going to come into play is to really look at some of the things that you, you need to consider. Um, so, you know, the first thing you need to consider is the cost of doing business. That's the, that's the biggest thing. You know, what are those elements that go into you being able to deliver on those services and in order to understand that clearly so that you know how to price that uh, your services out. So it's a balance of understanding what the market will hold and what what they will pay for but also looking at it as a cost plus model and this is really a cost plus model in terms of you know pricing your services so there's a couple considerations to take there it's not only you know making sure that you cover your costs from day to day but this is a very seasonal industry and a very seasonal business and so understanding that you know when you are busy you want to get enough uh, i guess make enough hay while the sun shines to you know, last through the the slower months of when the market starts to slow down in the December January timeframe, and as that picks up again, being able to uh, you know, uh, I guess, live through those humps uh, in your business and making sure that you have your cash flow to do it, and that's where profitability really kind of ties into it in terms of helping you that, and so this cost plus model when you're looking at it, you know, what things do you, you take into that consideration? It's, it's not only just expenses, 
But another thing, because you're a service-based business and, and a lot of people in the real estate photography business are single owner operators or have maybe one or two photographers working for them, your time, what is the value of your time? You have to take that into consideration too, because that really, and this is one of those things that I see a lot of people don't really take into consideration. You know, you're making X amount of dollars for X amount of work. Um, over the years, I've talked to a number of photographers who were new to the business and were spending a lot of time both in capture and home, more than an hour in capture and in home, uh, you know, for an average size house. I've talked to people who spend a couple hours in a home and try to make sure that they get their photos right and they're still kind of learning, don't have processes set up in order to be efficient and fast and be able to be have a repl repl replicable product to deliver to their uh, uh, to their customers. Um, and also then on the back end, spending a lot of time on the post-processing of the photos, uh, spending you know a couple hours there. And if your average shoot, a photo shoot is only between you know 150 to 200 dollars. When you spend four hours on a photo shoot, or three hours, or even two hours, that's that is a lot of time spent for the the amount of value that you're getting back for that product. So things to take into consideration, you know, the base cost is you know the time between the shoots as well, and that also is wear and tear on your vehicle, gas. If you're an electric car, well then great, but it's still wear and tear on the vehicle. There are, um, you know, what other costs that you may have? You have to take into consideration if you have other photographers working for you. What What is it that you're paying them? And now you got to back that out of, you know, your, basically your price, back out these expenses. Um, and, you know, if there's other vendor fees there as well, you're using third-party, um, you know, uh, scheduling, uh, third-party uh, photo delivery services, and even editing services. That is all going to eat into that cost. And at the end of the day, when you back all that out from your price, that remaining amount is your gross margin. And then your gross margins are really, that's where you want to make sure that you're saving enough or making enough money that is providing you to be able to run that business on an ongoing basis. And so something we could talk about a little bit more and making sure that you're priced right. And that goes back to really understanding the market. But at the end of the day, um, one thing about one thing about price that I, I always often look at is um, the uh, on a continuum. If you were to look at your cost and your price and then the value that you bring. And the value that you bring, the more that you bring, provide value, that gap between the price and the value, the more pull you're going to have in a marketplace. The more that you um, uh, have more profit between the cost and the price, it's a little bit more of a push into the market. But you have to have that balance in the understanding of providing enough value that you bring to your clients while maintaining that profitability so that you can continue to invest in your business and invest and, and grow as a business as well. Um, I think other ways that one thing to, to consider in terms of when you're pricing and stuff, um, one of the considerations is you have some fixed costs when you go to a home. So you know that I'm going to spend a half hour to drive between my photo shoots in a day. And so if I'm going from one shoot to another, I'm going to use X amount of gas and it's going to cost me on average X amount of dollars, let's say $30 to go to each shoot every day. And so if I can fit in four photo shoots in a day, great, then you've got that $30 fixed cost. Well, the nice thing about understanding that you have that fixed cost is if you can add on additional services to that, and we'll say, well, a photo shoot, and you're adding on an eye guide service to that, or an additional you know, drone footage, or a, a larger package where you're offering more services with that sunk cost already going to that property, you're able to make increase your margins. So, um, you're able to both grow your revenues, fit more, make more on every photo shoot, and while still maintaining those number of shoots that you want in a day. And some of these services, if they're not time consuming, allow you to you know, ramp up your revenue while also keeping some of your fixed costs kind of at bay. That takes out variable costs of you know, vendor costs for each of those services. But if it's something like video or even iGUIDE services, and we'll, because we're talking iGUIDE today, I'll, I'll, I might as well just talk about that. You'll have the vendor fee that you, you pay to us to draft the floor plans and create the 3D tour and send that back to you. 
But, you know, if you're already in a home and you're spending X amount of time, let's say half an hour or 45 minutes to do that photo shoot, now you can go back through that home and do, let's say, an eye guide in another half an hour. Well, you know, what's that additional revenue that I can gain from that, less the vendor cost, but already with the consideration that my fixed costs have been covered. So that cost of driving to that property. And so I'm able to make more in a day and and, and it works out to be even more per hour if you were to look at it on, on that kind of basis. I don't know if we want to take questions at the end and just, I guess I can touch on the third point, Kelly. Yep. If you guys have questions, I've been answering some of them as we go, but make sure to put them in the Q&A section. Um, and we, either myself or both of us, will go through them before the end of the session. So, you know, the first thing we talked about is really understanding your offering and what you're delivering and how that fits into the market. Second thing is pricing for profit. Well, the third thing is really how do you deliver or present your pricing? So the pricing packages. And I think this is, you know, one thing that uh, I've seen uh, a lot of different ways of doing that. There's a lot of standardized ways of doing that today. You can see online, uh, not only within uh, you know, our business of real estate photography, you see that with many services online where they'll present uh, a few options. There was a study done a number of years ago where um, they had consumers going into a grocery store. And what they were doing is they had a, a company that had all these different types of jam and they had people try out these jams. And so they did a little test is that when they had a couple of different jams to try and people were able to try the jam, the incidence of them uh, purchasing the jam went up. When they started to lay out more jams, so when they had a, a number of jams out on the table, let's say a dozen or more, there was too many uh, yeah. choices. And what happened is people would try more, but they didn't, they really had buyer, you know, buyer decision fatigue in terms of deciding which one to buy. And so the incidence of purchase actually went down when you had too many options. So this is a good lesson to learn in terms of not having too many options on what you're providing for your customers. And so, uh, you know, typically you can see there's sometimes a three option where you have a best value. It'd be a good, better, best strategy of different packages that are probably the most popular packages that would be offered in a market. And you can be, you know, in terms of um, having the most popular pick typically is that that middle choice. And, and then also the best value, maybe stepping up to the higher, uh, a higher package in terms of price point, but offering more value with that. And we already kind of touched on that. You know, you're able to combine services because you're already going to that home. You have that sunk cost already that you're covering. You know, if you can add in more services and make more on that one particular shoot, you're going to make, you know, both potentially higher gross margins, but also more revenue in that day. So things to consider in terms of laying out your options. Um, if you're adding on services, you know, typically the a rule of thumb, you know, for a lot of service businesses is not to offer too many different uh, options for those add on services and make them exactly that add-on services. You want a video? This is the type of video we do. You want a drone? Uh, this is the type of drone shoot we do. If if you want us to do, you know, social media posting for you, you know, here's the one add-on package with it. And you can tie those into the step-up packages. So you're adding, again, more value to that, that um, product. Uh, one thing that I, we've seen too, is I've seen a number of uh, photographers in our network invert some of the services that they're offering as well. So instead of a good, better, best strategy, they've led with that best strategy. And, um, you know, on their pricing pages, they've changed the placement and the precedence and the importance of the, the presentation of how they're presenting up their pricing packages. And, uh, and, you know, I think there's four cases where people have told me, and again, this is anecdotal out of four, but that they've seen that there's been a, a a trade up in terms of the packages that they're offering when people are going to their website and choosing those packages that, that they're offering. So just a, it's a, it's something that you can play around with and try different pricing strategies. My only caution is if you do change up your pricing, you know, make sure that you wait uh, a period of time before you change it up again, do not change it too often. Um, typically, 
you know, I think most businesses in this in this area, you're, you're reevaluating that once a year. If you're going to do that any more frequently than that, it can be, you know, challenging in terms of communicating that with your customers as well. Um, and then one thing, you know, to consider too is the different types of, you know, homes and properties you're shooting. So this kind of goes back to pricing. If, you know, when you, it goes back to that first point is that when you're looking in a market and you're, you're typically, am I shooting luxury homes? You want to take into consideration, am I shooting the average home? Am I shooting the certain size of homes? Well, it goes back to your pricing packages. How do you lay out your pricing packages with different sizes of properties? And so I bring this up, you know, especially with our pricing model, you've, you're based on square footage costs. So with each of these tiers, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you, how do you deliver on these different price pricing tiers? Uh, I think a rule of thumb that we've seen in quite often is, you know, either in 500 increments or a thousand increments in terms of square footages, uh, you know, setting different prices, having a base uh, a base price model for, you know, certain properties below a certain size and, and kind of stepping up from there. You don't want to, again, have too many options because it can uh, become uh, overwhelming. overwhelming and not as easy to, you know, to be able to order online or, or just to pick the package that you want. Uh, challenge there as well is making sure that you're getting accurate quotes or, or square footage uh, estimates from your clients as well. So you don't have to go back and, and bring up pricing. I guess, you know, I just wanted to kind of touch on those three points. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of topics that we could dive in deeper and, and uh, touch on a little bit um, uh, more specifics on. And, but I think maybe we open it up to questions. Yeah. I'm going to do a quick recap because yeah. we love that. We love recaps because um it allow you know tell people what you're going to tell them, tell them and then tell them what you told them. So um, Michael has decades. You're not that old. I'm not, not that old. You're not. Yes, old. I, have I do decades. have decades. Yes, <laughs> one decade. <laughs> Let many seasoned years of experience doing pricing strategy. So um, he brings a lot to the table in that regard. If you guys want to see um, some more kind of nitty gritty on some of these topics, let us know. You can reach out by a support ticket. Um, but the three main points have to do with understanding what you offer and the value of your offer, which involves a lot of different aspects, but it involves understanding what you bring to the table, which includes iGUIDE as your package offering and also involves knowing your competition. Um, pricing based on making sure you're making a profit and you can only price for profit if you know what your costs are, including the amount of time you're taking for all of the activities. So indirect, indirect costs. And then the last one is perception is kind of everything. You can very much um, package your prices based on what you want to promote more than others. And, and this is why, you yeah. know, fast food restaurants will have a, a basic, a medium and a premium, but the medium is the one that they really want people to buy because they give you the most value. So you can get the lower or the higher option, but the pricing is based on giving you the best bang for your buck. So there are a lot of different nuanced things that you can do to change the perception of the value of each of your packages. Um, but another main point brought up was decision fatigue. Don't give people too many options because then people won't make any decisions. <laughs> it's the kiss rule there, right? Yeah. Like it's, you know, keep it simple, superstar, you know, so that they've, you keep it simple explanation. Uh, I think one other thing I just quickly touch on that, that yeah. recap of pricing packages and what your presentation is, is, you know, if you have a pricing sheet that you're delivering to customers or that they're going to one place, um, it really needs to cover kind of three things, right? It needs to showcase your work, in terms of that yes. pricing page, you need to, uh, you know, have social proof and testimonials there that that reinforce that, you know, this is your brand, that you're reliable, and that this is what you do, and then clear on what you're going to provide so that this price is going to give you this, this, and this. And so making sure that that clear delivery mm -hmm. of what they can expect um, is, is really, those are the three basic rules around that pricing package. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we do have a question in uh, the chat. Um, so Angie is saying, I'm just brand new to real estate photography. What is the best way for me to get started? 
should I just offer one package? Well, I mean, I guess the services that you're offering, you may have, well, that's a great question. I think I think you may get requests for more than one or have more than one offering. I mean, if you have a base package, you want to be able to have the opportunity to trade people up. So I think a minimum, you want to have two or three packages to offer, if you're, especially if you're offering multiple services. So I'm making an assumption that you're on the webinar that you maybe offer uh, floor plans and, and 3D tours, you know, uh, iGUIDE, then, you know, that's definitely a, a step up. We've had customers that have only offer iGUIDE with a photo shoot and then have step ups there to the premium package. So even just within our offering, there's a couple of different packages that you can offer with your photos as well. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, you can add other things to those, those uh, um, add-ons in terms of the number of photos and, and, um, you know, there's other things that you can add in terms of that experience as well. So, yeah, I like your thought of keeping it simple, but maybe having a couple offerings so that you can trade your customers up. The one caveat I throw on that, if you're pricing yourself, just don't price yourself too low and um, make sure that, you know, you're competitive in the market mm -hmm. with what the value you're offering. Yeah, do yeah. do your research. Um do your research because that will that will really help you. But just to kind of repeat what Michael said, but in a slightly different way, you are on this webinar because hopefully you're offering iGUIDE as part of your packaging. <laughs> we hope anyways. And that means even if you were to just go off of a basic, like you offer photo only, you offer iGUIDE standard, you offer iGUIDE premium, that's an easy three, yeah. three, three for, three exactly. for right there. So um, we have somebody else in the chat who said, Mark, who says, we just mimic Planetar's pricing with our pricing. Okay. We charge a base price up to 2,000 square feet and price per square foot above that. And then we give them examples of what each of like a 3,000 tier would, would go with. So again, Perfect. we're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to kind of give you some guidance. And uh, if you're, you know, don't even know where to start, like Angie was saying, she's, she's kind of looking for where to start, but um, we have a guiding we have a guiding principle based on our own uh, costs of yeah. our packages, right? So we do it based on tiers and we have different packaging. So if if you are totally lost and don't know where to start, that's a great place to start is just go, you know, go off of what we have and then uh, work it out with your customers from there. Um, we have another question. We're going to wrap it up soon, though, guys. So if you have any last questions, get them in. Um, Ramon says, a realtor asked me for floor, floor plans with window dimensions, parking dimensions, but it doesn't look like that. It's just eye guide to me, right? So, so parking, sorry, parking. Yeah, dimensions. I assume you're talking like a parking, like a, a driveway, a driveway dimension. That would be something that isn't uh, part of what we offer. If you want to clarify a little bit. Um, yeah, we don't driveway dimensions. Yeah, we don't offer uh, driveway dimensions at this time. That's not part of the, the iGUIDE offering, if that's what you were asking about. Um, I don't know if you want to provide that manually as part of your own package. Um, and that's an add-on value of something since we're talking about pricing strategies. But in terms of what iGUIDE offers, window dimensions, um, don't come automatically and neither do driveway dimensions. We do have on-screen measurements possible uh, with the eye guide, but that's kind of a separate, whole separate topic. Mm -hmm. um, well, the wind dimensions, yeah, right now we don't serve that up. I think uh, it, that data is in captured. However, you can go in and you can measure that uh, yeah. in the 3D tour. So that's another option too, is that they can actually just measure that in the 3D tour themselves. If they're looking for specific you know, reasons for that. Um, mm -hmm. If they're looking for marketing at home, that might be a, a bit of work to put that together. Yeah, but I mean, one of the, the first point of the presentation was, what do you bring to the table? What's yeah. your value? So part of iGUIDE value are the on-screen measuring a measurement or measuring tools. So lots of people forget that that's a thing. And that is a value that iGUIDE offers that not every other uh, competitor does offer. So you should always be letting people know of all the things that they can do with what you are providing them. So... Thanks for that question. Okay. Um, 
no other questions in the Q&A right now. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. So <laughs> sorry about the, uh, the, you know, the technical difficulties, but yeah, I hopefully you found this uh, rewarding or helpful as is ideally. And uh, if you do have any fo uh, follow-up questions, please reach out. Yeah, please do. Um, so again, make sure you're downloading the mobile app, make sure um, our help center, I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but help.youreyeguy.com. We have tons of uh, resources there a search field, a chat bot to help you navigate through all those resources. We want to get the answers in your hands as soon as you need them. Um, everybody here should know how to get hold of support as well. Make sure you put reviews for the mobile app, please and thank you. Help us with that and check out our future masterclasses. And we'd love to see you back here. So um, if you guys are interested in more pricing strategy conversations, um, happy to hear. I, I would love that feedback. We can get that in uh, into the schedule for later this year. So thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday and happy eye guiding. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.